So you was really the catch in... I always say we, the men are catch, man. I always say we the catch, man. How dare you come and ask me, what do I bring to the table? I am the table. I don't care if you call me boo. I don't care if you call me zaddy. There, there's certain things. Paying bills, that's a husband benefit. Taking care of your car note, that's a husband benefit. Just like women are not nurses for bleeding men, men are not poverty eradication for lazy women. Now, I was gonna go a totally different way with this video, but I did not want to add more fuel to the fire of an already out of control situation. Now, what am I referring to? I am simply referring to both the men and the women referring to themselves as the prize in the relationship. Now, I have my notes all set up here to try to give a polished presentation. And to be quite honest, I have to keep re-recording this video, so I don't really wanna go through that all over again. But this whole notion of the man is the prize, the woman is the prize is really, really ridiculous, okay? Uh, it's a futile argument that doesn't need to be had. And I know that this argument, I will see this among some men that maybe they haven't had the best of luck or uh, the best success with some women and, and some women that may feel entitled. Now, I'm going to keep it 100 here. There are some women out there that feel entitled, all right? But not every woman's like that. But I wanted to address this issue, okay? So I'm gonna do the best I can to follow my notes, all right? So bear with me here. Now, in Matthew 20, 26 to 27, Jesus says, it must not be among you. On the contrary, whoever wants to be great amongst you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first amongst you must be your slave. Now, obviously Jesus, isn't talking about being a slave as in the slave trade, but he's talking about the position of a heart and showing gratitude towards one another, right? Not setting your own interests above the other person or above your husband or above your wife. He had to address this because, you know, the mother of two of his disciples came to him asking him to place her sons, one on his left, one of his right, whenever they got into glory. And he wanted to squash this jockeying for position. And that's what it is. It is a jockeying for position, is to try to validate who is more important. Is the man more important than a woman? Is the woman more important than a man? Now, I tend to lean more towards the woman being the prize, and I would like to say that the man is the catch. I don't like that prize thing used amongst men because to me, it sounds very feminine. That's just my opinion, and that's what I believe. But I refer to women as the prize because why? When God created Adam, he knew that Adam did not have a suitable mate. He did not have anyone suitable to help him to govern what God had given him, okay? When God saw that he needed someone to rule alongside of him, he created the woman out of Adam. Now, when he did this and he presented the woman to Adam, Adam looked at her and was awestruck. He was like, wow, this is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh, okay? Because he was so in awe over the beauty of this woman, the masterpiece that God had made, and the marriage decrees of, for this reason, a man shall leave his mother and father, and the man and the woman shall become one flesh. So the woman in the case was a gift to the man, a gift to him to love, cherish, protect, and to honor and esteem higher than himself. Now, I know some guys may not dig this, okay? I know some guys may say, uh, nowhere in the Bible does it say she's the prize, but I believe that these passages implies it. Because there's another passage that says that a man who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Uh, no, it doesn't say a prize, but she's a good thing. Now, that also suggests that that man knows how to choose the right type of woman, okay? And I'm going to say this right now. And I'm not trying to offend any of the ladies today, but I've seen how some of the young ladies and even some of the older women act. But not every woman can be a good thing. Not every woman can be a prize. 
just like not every man can be a good catch, okay? So, and you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to elaborate on that. If you want a good woman, men, you got to know how to choose them. You're not going to find these women in the clubs. You're not going to find these women at the bars. You're not going to find them in places like that, okay? If you're a man that is in pursuit of God, you will find your wife in purpose because every marriage is for purpose reasons, okay? Now, I know there's a physical attraction and all that, but you will find her in purpose. And ladies, the same thing. You're not going to find a good man in the club. You're not going to find a good man in the bar. When I say a good man and a good woman, I'm solely referring to someone who has good character, who is going to care more about you than yourself. A guy that finds a a good woman, that good woman is going to make sure that she wants to do things that make the man feel like he's appreciated, that he is wanted. She is not going to be over demanding. She is not going to to have standards on, well, I ain't going to the Cheesecake Factory. I'm not going to go to Olive Garden. A woman that's a good woman would simply want to be around you, whether you take her to Chili's, Olive Garden, or to a five-star restaurant. And ladies, a good man is going to be a man that is not going to be playing with your mind, who's not going to be trying to get you in the bed and get your panties off. No, I know that a lot of people believe in sex before marriage, and I did it, and it wasn't right. After becoming a Christian, I realized that my way of thinking was wrong. Still, a good man isn't going to be trying to play with your head. He's not going to be playing the field. He's not going to be disrespectful. He's not going to be abusive in his language. He is going to go out of his way to try to show you that he is the man for you. The Bible also says that the husbands are to love their wives as Christ loves the church. The wives are to submit to their husband as unto the Lord. If you're not ready to submit women to the man, you're you're not fit to be a wife. Men, if you're not willing to love your wife as Christ loves the church, meaning to give up your own self-interest for the sake of your wife, then you're not ready to be a husband. You can expect a woman to want to be committed to you if you do not have a clear path, a vision for her to follow. If you are still working at McDonald's, if you are still dragging your feet and showing indecisiveness, you're going to have to have more than that. You're going to have to be in a position where you will be able to take care of a wife. Okay, you're going to have to get a trade, get you something that tells that woman that, hey, I'm going to be able to take care of you. And you got to be in a position where you are in control of your emotions. She needs to know that you're not going to fly off the top and lose control. She needs to know that you're going to be faithful to her, that you're not going to be some guy that's just going to be playing the field, messing with multiple women and falling behind his excuse. Well, that's just how men are. No, that's not how real men are. That's men of the world, but not men of purpose and women. Like my pastor says, if you can't respect him now, you're not a good prospect. If you can't esteem him highly, if you can't give it the man who is working hard, you know that he is working to go somewhere. If your requirements is, well, are you going to pay my bills, pay my rent? Then, you know, you're just nothing but a harlot. You're just a, a woman that is exchanging the service of affection for material goods. And that's not a good prospect. But anyhow, I'm going to wrap this up, and and I didn't follow my notes at all. But the main point is this. Both of you guys are a prize to each other. There should not be this jockeying for position of who's the greatest, who's the prize. But anyhow, I'm going to get on out of here. And if you found any value in this, please give me some likes so that those who need to see this can watch it and it can help me out with that YouTube algorithm. And if you really want to take it a step further, subscribe and watch some of my videos till the next time i'll see you on the next one